Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Joe Weider's 2010 Olympia Weekend, presented by Ultimate Nutrition and brought to you by GNC. At this time, we would like to bring on stage the chairman, president, and CEO of American Media, David Pecker. On behalf of American Media and the IFBB, I want to welcome everyone to the Mr. Olympia. Tonight is the 45th anniversary of the competition. The first Mr. Olympia event was held in September of 1965 at the Brooklyn Academy of Music in New York. Only three men competed for the title and the prize money was $1,000. Now, 45 years later, in front of 8,000 of the best fans any sport has ever had, I'm proud to say that we again have set a new record for prize money. $815,000 with $200,000 going to tonight's winner. Mr. Olympia is truly where legends are made. Winning the crown takes dedication, hard work, guts, perseverance, and a belief that you can be the best ever. Over the past 45 years, 456 men have challenged for the honor of being Mr. Olympia and only 12 have achieved it. I'd like to introduce those 12 men to you right now. Larry Scott was the first ever Mr. Olympia, and in both physique and professionalism, he set the standard for all future Mr. Olympias to come. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Scott. Sergio Oliva was unbeatable in his three years, 1967, 1968, and 1969 of Olympia supremacy. Ladies and gentlemen, Sergio Oliva. In 1976, at his fifth attempt to win the title, Franco Colombo climbed atop the Olympia throne. With striated chest and bat-like lats, Franco swept to victory as he did again in 1981. Ladies and gentlemen, Franco Colombo! Taking the Olympia title in 1977, 1978, and 1979, Frank Zane ushered in a new era of bodybuilding that encompassed superb conditioning allied with aesthetic appeal and classic presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, Frank Zane! <laughs> two runner-up spots in 1980 and 1981, Chris Dickerson, at age 43, became the oldest competitor to win the Mr. Olympia title, when in 1982, his classy physique and presentation nailed down victory in London. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Dickerson! was the year of Samir Banut as the Lion of Lebanon broke new ground in presenting a Christmas tree back that combined with watertight conditioning saw him go home with a Sandow. Ladies and gentlemen, Samir Banut! <laughs> 
At age 24, Lee Haney took his first Olympia in 1984 and proceeded to win it a then unprecedented eight consecutive times with a physique that was from head to toe totally awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, Lee Haney! England's Dorian Yates began his Olympia reign in 1992 and took the sport to a new level in size and conditioning as he collected six Sandows before injury forced him to retire after his 1997 win. Ladies and gentlemen, Dorian Yates! With humongous mass and conditioning, Ronnie Coleman equaled Lee Haney's record by taking eight consecutive Olympia titles starting in 1998. In 2003, he was at 287 pounds, the biggest ever Mr. Olympia champ. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Coleman. tried longer than Jacksonville's Dexter Jackson to win a Sandow statuette. After eight previous attempts, which included five top four placings, he finally achieved Mr. Olympia glory by ousting Jay Cutler from the top spot in 2008. Ladies and gentlemen, Dexter Jackson! <laughs> Cutler's Olympia battles against Ronnie Coleman over the past decade were legendary. Jay finally beat Ronnie in 2006 and retained the crown in 2007. In 2008, he lost the title before last year, winning it back in sensational style. Ladies and gentlemen, Jay Cutler! <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think we missed someone. Good evening, everybody. Now, throughout my life, there's so many accomplishments that I'm very proud of. Whether it's being governor of the great state of California, or owning my own business, or becoming the highest paid actor in Hollywood, whatever it is. But let me tell you, none of that compares to being seven-time Mr. Olympia. And I'll tell you why, to me, Mr. Olympia and bodybuilding is the most important thing, because without that, I wouldn't be where I am today. All of that is from that foundation from bodybuilding. Just think that in this competition's 45-year history, only 12 people in the world can call themselves Mr. Olympia. What a special group, and a group that I'm honored to be part of. So I want to say hello, a special hello to all my fellow Mr. Olympias, that are up there on stage. What a great group. And I tell you, I love those guys because they're not only the most muscular and the best, but they're all great, great guys. Of course, none of this would be possible without the work and the vision of a very special individual, my dear friend, Joe Weider. 45 years ago, it was Joe who started this competition. And let me tell you something. I remember the first one that won the competition. It was Larry Scott, Mr. Olympia. I was over in Austria. And I saw him on the cover of this muscle magazine. It was really extraordinary with his blonde hair, his good looking face, his gigantic arms, and his monster calves, and his deltas were popping out all over the place. I mean, it was incredible, so inspirational. I wanted to come over here to America. I wanted to become a Mr. Olympia like him. So he really inspired me. So Joe, along with his brother Ben, are the founding fathers of bodybuilding and the worldwide fitness revolution. Joe was out there pushing people to eat well and to work out hard uh, before most people believed that fitness was at all important. As a matter of fact, no one knew about bodybuilding at all, but Joe kept pushing and pushing. 
He even started a publishing empire and the day distributes muscle and fitness magazines in 22 different languages all around the world. Wherever you travel, if you go to Russia, to China, or to Japan, or to Europe, anywhere in Africa, his magazines are there. So you can imagine how I felt when Joe began writing to me as a kid. I was 18 years old and he encouraged me in my bodybuilding ca career. I mean, he kept pushing me, kept writing me and inspiring me. He promised me that, Arnold, if you win Mr. Universe, I'm going to bring you over here. You become part of our Weida empire. I said, wow, this is incredible. So I kept training and training. So he was a great, great inspiration. So I've always said that Joe is really responsible for bringing me here to America. And Joe has always been like a father to me, even though he doesn't like to hear that because he sees himself much more at an age like I am in. But Joe, you're not. You are up there in the 90s, let's be honest, and you are like my father, a great father. I mean, this is really you, the most generous person, not just to me, to all of us. But I can guarantee you this, without Joe, I would not have become Mr. Olympia, I would not have come to America, I wouldn't have had all of the successes that I've had, I wouldn't have become the Hollywood action star, and I definitely wouldn't be speaking to you here today as governor of the greatest state of the greatest country in the world. So Joe, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for everything that you've done for me and for everyone there on the stage, for the whole bodybuilding sport, for everybody. And by the way, before I finish here, I just want to say, I wish everyone good luck in this year's competition. Thank you. Now, I'd like to bring out the man whose vision made tonight possible. The man who founded the sport of bodybuilding, who created Miss Olympia. The master blaster himself, please a standing ovation for Mr. Joe Weider. Without further delay, I give you the 2010 Mr. Olympia Finals.